Okay, so this is my second attempt at a rant video. I had recorded about 10 minutes of this rant and I realized I was kind of just going all over the place. I was getting really angry and kind of yelling a little bit. I didn't want that to be the final version of this rant that goes up online. So I decided to just scrap the whole thing and start over. So here we go with round two of my rant. I am going to rant today about the people who like to complain about movies that air quotes get everything wrong about existing stories. This can apply to novels and it can also apply to comic books. It really doesn't apply to anything else, although I guess there are a couple of other things that don't fit into those two categories. Recently, this week, the internet was set ablaze by a couple of casting choices that drove a lot of people insane. I will mention all of them back to back and then I will go on with my rant. Michael Douglas, who is a 70-something year old man, was cast as Henry Pym in the upcoming Ant-Man movie. This made a lot of people angry because the Ant-Man in the comic books is actually in his 30s and is not a 70-year-old man. Another casting choice that made many people angry was Kristen Stewart has been cast in a loose adaptation of the novel 1984 and many many people have suddenly decided that they are huge 1984 fans and they are really upset about this casting choice. And then there was a rumor that Johnny Depp was going to play Doctor Strange in the upcoming Doctor Strange movie. Anyone who keeps up with his channel definitely knows about that one because just a couple of days ago I put up a video where I said that I was very opposed to the idea of Johnny Depp playing Doctor Strange and I talked about five other actors that I would rather play Doctor Strange. Now, in light of that video, this rant is going to seem very hypocritical, but I think it's still okay that I put this up so soon after that video. Basically, I am absolutely driven completely insane by the people who say that the movie got everything wrong and air quotes ruined the book. I cannot stand it when people say that. You know why? Because the movie did not do anything to ruin the book. If you are a huge fan of the Hunger Games novel and you absolutely hated the movie, guess what? You can still go back and read the Hunger Games novel. The same is true for Ant-Man. If you don't like that they cast a 70-year-old man as Henry Pym, you can still go back and read all 12 Ant-Man comics from Marvel, and Michael Douglas being cast as Henry Pym is not going to have any negative impact on those Ant-Man stories that you love. If you are a fan of 1984, guess what? You don't have to watch this loose adaptation of that story. Let me reiterate that this is not a very faithful adaptation of the story. It is such a loose adaptation that they are not calling the movie 1984. I really don't understand all these people who are suddenly so anti Kristen Stewart as if she needed any help after the Twilight movies. Everyone hates her and her acting after those Twilight movies, but now it's like the hatred has been increased a thousandfold because suddenly thousands and thousands of fans of 1984 are ready to burn her house down because they don't like that she has been cast in this movie. You wouldn't even believe that there were that many fans of 1984 before hearing this casting choice. I didn't even think that many people even knew that 1984 existed, and yet suddenly the entire internet is on fire because she has been cast in this movie. So how do I reconcile this with my anger at the thought that Johnny Depp was going to be playing Doctor Strange? I really can't. I don't think that Doctor Strange is a capable enough actor to play Doctor Strange. I saw a lot of people, not on the comments of my YouTube video, but a lot of people were commenting on my video where it was shared elsewhere, and several people were kind of complaining about the choices of the actors that I talked about in that video, saying that Johnny Depp is the best thing ever and that he is not a bad actor and that he would put everything into it. I strongly disagree. In the last 10 years, I can think of exactly one movie Movie where Johnny Depp has actually tried. Everything else is either Pirates of the Caribbean or The Lone Ranger or Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Those movies are not necessarily bad movies. I actually liked a couple of the Pirates of the Caribbean movies. I don't think that Johnny Depp was really trying very hard in any of those movies though. This is why I would not want Johnny Depp to be Doctor Strange. 
Having said that, if today they announce that Johnny Depp is absolutely 1000% going to be Doctor Strange, it would not ruin my love of the character of Doctor Strange. I could still go back and read the Doctor Strange comics, and Johnny Depp being Doctor Strange would not have a negative impact on the character in the comics. This whole mentality of the movie ruined the character, it completely baffles me. If you look at, say, Batman and Robin, the movie from 1997, it is widely considered to be one of the worst superhero movies of all time. I strongly disagree with that sentiment, but we will just roll with it for now. If that is true, if it is one of the worst movies of all time, not just superhero movies, but worst movies of all time, how come Batman is still in publication now, over 15 years later? It's because that movie, despite its best efforts, did not ruin the character of Batman. Even though nobody liked that movie, people still can go to the comic books and read Batman and enjoy Batman. At the end of the day, I think why this bothers me so much is that movies are a different medium than comic books. You cannot expect a movie to do the exact same thing that the comic books do. And even if it's something that is hugely different from the comics, bear in mind, movies are a different medium. There is this erroneous idea that just because the comic books preceded the comic book movies, that the comic books are automatically superior to the movies. Case in point, the fan reaction that everyone in the multiverse had to the Mandarin twist in Iron Man 3. If you are one of the three people who doesn't know what I'm talking about, then please turn this video off right now as I am about to spoil Iron Man 3. So if you are not aware, in Iron Man 3 we have the character the Mandarin, who is apparently the leader of this large terrorist organization, very similar to how he is in the comic books, with the big exception being that in the movie he appears to be more of a Middle Eastern terrorist, whereas in the comic books he's from China. But the big twist comes when we find out that the actual leader of the Mandarin is a white guy named Aldrich Killian, and that the leader that we were seeing the entire time in the movie is actually an actor hired by Aldrich Killian. We find out that the reason Killian did this is because the people of the world needed a face to hate and to focus their energies on so that he could do all of his evil stuff in the background without being noticed. I thought this was absolutely a brilliant twist ending that I did not see coming. Many people absolutely hated this twist ending, but I would suggest if you asked anyone who hated this why they hated it, the only reason that they would be able to give is that, well, it's not like it was in the comic books. And my question for those people is, who cares? In the comic books, the Mandarin was a hugely racist stereotype who was created in the 1960s. That racist stereotype just does not work in today's social and political climate. If you throw the air quotes comic book Mandarin up on the screen, you're going to make far more non-comic book fans very, very unhappy and very uncomfortable with this portrayal of this character than you are people who are already unhappy with the version of the Mandarin on screen. I think about 100% of the people who were unhappy with the twist in Iron Man 3, if they just sat down and objectively looked at the Mandarin from the comics and the Mandarin from the movie, most of them would probably say that yes, the one from the movie is better. It's narratively better, the twist ending works better, just about everything in the character just worked out a lot better than the character from the comic books. But you're not going to have people admit that because they are holding on to this really kind of dumb idea that just because the comics came first that they are automatically superior. I am a huge comic book fan, but let me go ahead and break the news to you guys. Sometimes the comic books are stupid. Sometimes there are things that happen in the comics that really aren't that good at all, and if they ever decide to make a movie out of a certain storyline, they are going to omit certain things from the comic book storyline because they just did not work in the comic book, and they definitely will not work in the movie, or maybe it's things that would work in a comic book, but still will not work in the context of a movie. This brings me back to the crux of my entire rant. The movies are different from the comics. If they decide to cast someone that you don't like, and somehow, in your twisted mind, you've decided that this is going to ruin the character or the story, ask yourself for a minute, how is this really going to impact the story that you love so very much? 
Or if you are one of these people who complains that the movie did something slightly different than what the comic books do, ask yourself, why do you need the movie to do the exact same thing that the comic books did? If the comic book zigged and the movie zagged, why do you want the movie to zig when the comic book already did that thing? Sometimes the reason I get so excited about certain comic book movies is because I get to see a story that is different than what we get in the comic books. I love the X-Men comic books. I have almost three shelves of X-Men comic books. But I also love the X-Men movies, even though they are very different things, and at this point, I would not want the X-Men movies to try and turn themselves into something more similar to what the X-Men are in the comic books. I like the X-Men movies for what they are, I like the X-Men comic books for what they are. And I really have trouble understanding these people who want the movies to be exactly what the comic books are. You are just going to have to understand that if you want something exactly like the comic book, then you should go and read the comic book, because that is the only thing that is going to be exactly like the comic book. And that ends this rant. I know that I've definitely made some people angry here. I know I've stepped on a lot of toes. I don't care. I had to get this off of my chest, and now that it is off my chest, I can go about being a happy human being. If you are not one of the many people who I've made angry in this video, I hope you will like, share, comment, and subscribe. And if you did like this video, or even if you didn't, I encourage you to come back tomorrow for an entirely different kind of video. I've got all sorts of videos on this channel, many different kinds, so I encourage you to check out what I have. Maybe if you didn't like this video, there's something else on this channel that you will like. So I will see you guys tomorrow with something totally different. So until then, have a great day. Catch you later.